most of the Canadians are struggling to pay their mortgage. You know. Interest rates are way high at this moment. We don't know when they will be uh, down. Uh, in Peel region, we are seeing lots of uh, challenges, crime, particularly cars, theft, and uh, uh, we are glad that uh, our federal government took the initiative and did auto summit. Mm -hmm. We don't know uh, uh, what outcomes we have uh, after that. Canada is going through a lot of challenges at this time, particularly post-COVID. Mm -hmm. Government did a wonderful job during the COVID time. We were prepared for this kind of situation. What, what are your long-term and short-term plans to take country out of this situation now? Excellent question, and, and you're absolutely right that following COVID, where, where we did better than most of our peer countries, where the economy bounced back faster, um, the entire world was faced with an inflation challenge uh, that wasn't as bad in Canada as it was in many other places, but still uh, was very difficult for families with grocery bills, with fuel prices. Um, and we've worked very, very hard over the past years to bring down inflation. And bringing down inflation is what's going to allow interest rates to come down again. We are hopeful that in the coming months we will see interest rates start to move down, and that will be a huge relief uh, for many, many Canadians. Part of the challenge, though, is that um, it's not just about, about the cost of housing, it's about the availability of housing. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned that people with mortgages are worried there's so many people who don't even imagine ever getting mortgages because yeah. they can't imagine owning a home. And that's one of the things that we absolutely wanted to turn around. Because of all the different challenges Canada has faced over the coming year, the past years, the idea that Canada isn't as fair as it used to be, that particularly for young people, um, that the economy doesn't work for them. If we think about our parents' generation or generations past that came to this country, got good jobs, worked very hard, but were able to buy their homes, buy homes and, and build a future in the community. Young people today, yeah. they work as hard, if not harder, than any previous generation, but they can't imagine buying a home. That's something that requires a government to step up and support. So whether it's the largest plan on housing that we've ever seen, uh, whether it's investments that are directly helping young people, whether it's asking the most successful uh, and wealthiest people to pay a little more so we can invest in young people. Um, that's how we're doing it. And that's, that's that idea of fairness that runs through everything we do. And quite frankly, everything that we can all agree on in Canada, that, that there should be a fair chance for everyone to succeed. On the auto uh, theft issue, it's one that we've taken very seriously. You, uh, you mentioned the auto summit and wondered what outcomes have come yeah. from it. How about 600 cars uh, yeah. re 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 recovered uh, worth $35 million at the Port of Montreal? Uh, how about elements in the budget uh, where we are banning the kind of technology that uh, people are using to break into cars? We're also making significant investments in fighting organized crime with se more serious consequences. Uh, we've stepped up with over $120 million just for the government of Ont for our partnerships with Ontario. $28 million for the Canada Border Services Agency, $15 million for other, uh, other uh, police agencies. There is work being done and we're going to continue to work with it on all partners because it's not right that people should feel uh, so um, uh, impacted by the theft of their vehicles and increasingly by the home invasions that are coming with it. We have to put a stop to that. That's what this government's focused on. Okay. My next follow-up question is that Canada was always hot favorite destination for immigrants from all over the world. But of late we are seeing now, uh, we have hundreds and thousands of international students here. Uh, now, government is taking, uh, I'm mean, reviewing their policies, immigration policies, that putting caps on some categories. So what we see the future of immigration in Canada? Yeah, no. Immigration built this country's success. Yeah. Uh, and not just economically, but in terms of the strong, vibrant communities that make up this country. Uh, as a government, we are committed to immigration and we remain committed to immigration. We have actually increased the number of permanent residents every year over the past years. We're now taking in about 465,000 uh, a year. We'll be on our way to 500,000 a year. The permanent residents that arrive every year are 
the right number for Canada, we will continue to make sure we're bringing them in. The challenge we've seen over the past yeah. years, particularly post-COVID, is in three different categories. One, uh, asylum seekers, uh, whether it was uh, people coming up from Mexico or people coming ir irregular arrivals uh, or people claiming asylum in ways that uh, was putting too much of a burden on the system, even though we continue to be a country that is a welcoming place for people who need, uh, need to flee war and, and violence. Second, uh, temporary workers. Uh, there has been a massive increase in temporary mm -hmm. workers as we've seen, we've seen uh, labor shortages, we've seen challenges. This is good that we continue to be open to the world on that, but the numbers of temporary workers have go grown so fast yeah. over the past few years that there's a worry that it's driving down wages for temporary workers, it's uh, creating uh, hardship for Canadians, even as we do know we need to bring more people in. So we're trying to work with the provinces to get the temporary worker numbers to a, a responsible and, and, and sustainable level. And finally, on international students. International students have always been an incredible contribution mm -hmm. to Canada. Uh, the idea that, that the best and brightest from around the world would come study in our extraordinary universities and colleges and then either stay and build a life here now that they have Canadian experience and Canadian education or return home and bring the qualities and the education they have to have an impact in their, in their home communities. Both of those things are great. Unfortunately, over the past two or three years, the numbers of international students have exploded. Yeah. Both the educational institutions mm -hmm. and the provinces um, allowed for a, a, an increase from 200,000 to 700,000 rapidly in ways that has made the international students themselves incredibly vulnerable. Uh, they are having a hard time uh, with the cost of living increases, yeah. harder time finding good places to live where they're yeah. not being taken advantage of, uh, harder time with mental, mental health challenges, yeah. uh, with affordability, um, with getting the quality education they came for. That's not happening. And we need to make sure we have a system where international students are properly protected and supported because that's good for Canada and it's good for the world. That's why we put... Uh, a limit and a cap for two years on international students because uh, the provinces weren't doing the work they needed to do to ensure accreditation and acceptance and indeed the colleges weren't doing a good enough job of making sure they had the resources and support for all these young people who were coming in and paying a lot of money for it. Yeah. So the federal government had to step in and say, okay, We've got to figure out how to make sure that the success of international students is at the center of our system, and that's what we've done. Thank you, Prime Minister, and uh, happy.